Okay, let's kick this off by modeling a toaster in Blender so we can make our toaster robot. In this video, I'm just going to show you how to make the normal toaster. It's a stylized toaster. And I think it's a good tutorial for beginners because we're going to do some like subdivision surface modeling, but it's really easy. So shift A, M and C to add a cube and I tap into edit mode. And I'm just going to start scaling it a little bit. I think a toaster shouldn't be so cube like so i'm just trying out some shapes here a little spoiler ahead in the end i changed the shape of the toaster a bit more so here i'm making it a bit long but then i decide against that i also tried to bevel the edges but then i decide to just go ahead and do it completely with the subdivision surface modeling as a side note if you see me hitting f8 and f9 that's just my undo and redo and F1, F2, that's my custom shortcuts to switch between the modes. So F1 is object mode, F2 edit mode, F3 is post mode and so on. I just find it to be really useful. Sometimes you have to go back between like weight paint, object mode. And once you get used to those F, X keys, you can do that quickly. So here I'm adding a subdivision surface modifier with control two. That gives me two subdivisions. And then I increase it to a three. Render doesn't really matter right now because I'm going to apply that way before I'm going to render this thing out. What the subdivision does is it takes your existing geometry, adds a bunch more and then it kind of like gradually smooths out the, the normals you have in between those. There are two main ways to get the sharp edges. One is to increase the crease. That you can do that on the edges. Right here if you go to item, main crease, make it to one. That's the main way, probably the cleanest way. The other way is you can just add more geometry, right? Because now the average between those two edges here is um, tiny. And then you can do it this way. But I think uh, using the crease is better because then you, you don't have these perfectly overlapping geometry and there's no like clicking confusion. Okay, let's go Control R, make a loop card. And with this one still selected, I'm gonna bevel it, Control B and just drag it out a bit. So it gets a bit wider and we are approaching our toaster shape. Into side view, I'm just trying to make this like a little less rounded, I guess. So Control R, another loop card, move this up and down a bit, just try to find the nice spot. And then of course I can also just scale around the original geometry that I have. So I select those three faces. Uh, proportion editing is turned on, which helps a lot to get these smooth effects. Um, in this case, there's no effect because the next vertices are so far away and my proportional editing influence is quite small, but I'm already having it on because I know I'm gonna use this a lot to make sure this uh, stays nice and smooth. No idea why I extruded it this way, but yeah. So just scaling it inward a little bit. And here I think this entire thing is a bit too tall for a toaster. So I select the three bottom faces, then G and Z, move them up a bit. And here I reduce the subdivision to two levels. Um, I want to copy geometry, so I want to apply apply this thing and then I can just copy some geometry. And it might be a little bit easier if I have less spaces to deal with. To be honest, doesn't make much of a difference. So control A to apply this one. And you can click shift D and here my screencast keys uh, kind of stop working. So make sure you have auto match turned off. Shift D to duplicate P to separate by selection and now it's its own object. You tap into object mode and then you can select this new object. And so the geometry is exactly the same. Here I tap into edit mode A to select all and then Alt E and this gives you this um, extrude menu. The extrude along normals, Control Alt L, that's just my custom shortcut. Usually it doesn't have one assigned, but you can select it here. And then you can extrude it along the normals. So let's just do that a bit. Okay, the next thing I want to do is make an inset 
for the toaster handle, you know, that little thing that you push down to push the toast down. I think pretty much every toaster I've ever seen has that thing. And I make sure the cursor is still in the middle, which means also the middle of our toaster, because obviously I want the inset to be exactly in the middle of the toaster, in the middle from the front view, obviously not the side. Um, so I add a cylinder, shift A, M, Y for cylinder. But before I do the inset, I decided, you know what, I want to change the shape a little bit because now I think it looks a bit too rounded. So I just go ahead and with proportional editing on, I select a few edges, just drag around, just trying to find a nice looking form. And I decided to go for a bit of a stylized look. And one thing that you can often see with like stylized cartoony stuff is like, it's kind of like bulging, like it's um, bloated up, like you, someone sticked a, an air pump in it and pumped it up. So it gets smaller on the bottom and also on the top. So it's, you know, balloon like, almost like it's uh, squashed and stretched already. So I'm trying to do that here, you know, selecting some edge loops, scaling them, selecting some face loops. And of course I have proportional editing turned on. So it's always nice and smooth. I don't want to just like move one edge loop and then get like these wicked sharp edges. Now, booleans often work better when the objects that you're using are shaded smooth. So I right click the cylinder, select shade smooth. Now it's also smoothing out every edge on the cylinder, but we don't want the top edge to be smoothed out. So here in the object data properties, under normals, we can select auto smooth. So it's only going to smooth faces like or edges that have this angle um, below 30 degrees. And I'm also going to smooth the toaster, right click, shade smooth. I can do the same here, auto smooth. And then I see actually these angles are a bit too sharp, but I can just increase the auto smooth angle. And before I do the Boolean, I decided I'm going to add one more subdivision. So control one subdivision and control A to apply it. Now we have more geometry to work with because I want to copy some geometry later on. And I think this is also going to be the final subdivisions that I'm going to use for the model. There is a super useful add-on called Bool Tool. You can enable that in the preferences and then you have it in this uh, edit menu. So just go to edit preferences and search for Bool Tool. Comes with Blender because now you can easily you select the first one. That's going to be your Boolean. Then you shift select the one that you want to you know, operate on. That's going to get the Boolean modifier. And with control minus, now we just made the difference Boolean. And the nice thing is it also turned the cylinder into the wireframe, which is here on a viewport display. It switched from texture to wired and it also hit it from the render, which is really nice. So you don't get like uh, nasty surprises. Sometimes you render your scene and you realize you have all these booleans still on. And now we can just, you know, position this and maybe scale it. Now booleans can sometimes give you trouble and one thing that's good to avoid is having those like perfect edges uh, on top of each other. Blender is not always going to say, oh, let's, let's combine those, but it's going to like try to make these edges really close and things can get messy. So usually it's better to have the edges not overlap. What we can do here is we select this cylinder and we just want to rotate it like half a face of the cylinder, so to speak. I know it has 32 faces, so I wrote it on the Z by 360 divided by the number of faces by 2, which is 64. And you can see now it rotated this uh, half a face, so that makes sense. And the bool is no longer going to overlap here. If your boolean looks funky, sometimes it helps to switch between the solver here, fast and exact. Uh, this case doesn't seem to make any difference and it's also looking quite good. We don't seem to get any strange shading artifacts. Um, all those things can happen when you do booleans. 
Here, I just make a loop cut. I just figure, you know what, if I want to edit, some faces might be helpful if they are a little bit smaller. To be honest, didn't really make a difference here in this case, but I'm just used to doing that. And then I go ahead and apply the Boolean with Control A, and now I can delete the cylinder. And there are a little bit of shading issues we can see here. So if we tap into edit mode, one vertex mode, there are these two vertices. You can see they are really close together. And a super easy way to get rid of that is turn on auto merge on the top right and just select one of the vertices and hit GG for edge slide. Here's auto merge and just slide it into the other one and now they become one and you see now this uh, strange shading is gone. Now I want to make an extrusion. I think a lot of toasters have that too. You know, just kind of plastic thing around, around that. And while I'm selecting this, I'm also realizing this might be a good moment to add a mirror. Cause once again, I'm going to copy the geometry out of the existing object. And when you do that, the modifiers also get duplicated. So, you know, why not add the uh, mirror modifier on the toaster, we might need it here, and then we have it on the new object. Now just make sure to have all the faces selected, not forgetting some kind of edge. And here I make a bit of a stupid mistake, because instead of duplicating the faces and then separating them, I just hit P and separate it, and I just cut a hole into the toaster, and I'm an idiot, and I didn't realize that until way later. But then, of course, it wasn't that, that complicated to fix it. Anyhow, moving on with the uh, ripped out part of the toaster, I select these two vertices. And then you can either hit Ctrl B and V to bevel vertices or Shift Ctrl B that also gets you into vertex bevel mode. And then with the mouse wheel, I increase the number of bevels just to get some nice smooth surface here. Now I select all faces and then E to extrude and I just take the angle that it gives us. I think it works quite nicely for this kind of surface that we have. Just extrude a bit and here on the mirror I turn on bisect and also to turn on flip. So the other side that we are mirroring to uh, removes the, the mesh. So now we have these smooth rounded corners on both sides. Then I wanted to adjust the bottom a bit. I think now it looked strange that it's like uh, too vertical. I kind of want to get closer to the original shape and just make the, the bottom a bit uh, smaller, like moving in. So I can just select the bottom faces and then have proportional editing turned on and I just scale them inwards a bit. You know, so we get like this nice shape here as well. And then here I add a subdivision surface, so control one. And then this isn't really smooth enough, so I can just hit control two and it modifies the existing modifier. Uh, pretty handy. And the cool thing is when I tap into edit mode, of course, I still have my original geometry. So it's a lot easier to make some smooth adjustments here. Here I select the outer edge loop and increase the crease. So this is a sharp edge and I think sometimes it works nicer. You just make it sharp and then later on you're going to go in with a bevel and make this like a little bit smoother. But overall the shape is like this, um, like a flat, flat angle here. And uh, this is where I go in and fix the toaster. Super easy. just. Um, make a few faces, you know, select the three triangles here, hit F to make a face and then that edge is closed. And I figured since I already have this one uh, separated, I'm also going to select the, the floating faces here and join them with the ones that are ripped out. So it's its own object. Then here I kind of wanted to edit the shape a bit and I added a bevel modifier you can just bevel it by hand, but sometimes it's nice to have a modifier. And it comes in handy because I'm going to edit the shape a bit more. And so of course the bevel modifier means uh, I only have to 
work with the existing geometry. So three segments, not a lot. And then I go in there. And here I want to edit the shape a little bit more. So slash to go into isolation mode. So I can select these otherwise hidden face loops. Uh, and just select this and then GZ. I can move this up and adjust it a bit. The extrusion for this handle thing, I'm just going to do manually. Not going to use bevel modifiers. So I just select the outer loop and then control B to bevel it. And now the next thing I want to make a little insert where the like toaster slider handler connects with the inside of the toaster. That makes sense. So what I mean is, you know, the little handle that you push down, it's obviously connected with the inside and it's usually like very crude mechanic. It's really just, you're quite literally pushing down this thing. So I just add a cube here and then I'm going to do the same. And thanks to the boot tool, once again, I just select the cube, then shift select this handle thing. And with control minus on the numpad, I can just add these difference boolean. And here it doesn't seem to work at first, but when I select this one, I go into isolation mode. I say, yes, it's the wireframe. It did add the boolean, so I didn't click anything in the wrong order or something. And here I just switch to exact. And in this case, it works. Sometimes Blender does that. And yeah. Other times it can also help to just move around the, um, the object, the bool that you're cutting out from. And you know, just gotta play around with it. But yeah, in this case, simply switching to exact does the trick and yeah. Moving on, of course, now there is a hole. I'm gonna fix this way in the end because I want to keep this pool live so I can do the handle and everything first and then maybe adjust this thing. For the handle, I just add another cube, scale this down and go into front view. Make sure it actually fits through the hole that I just cut in and scale it down. I just want like this uh, connection thing here, right? Which is basically a metal pin or something. Here I tap into edit mode, select this font face and then shift S cursor to select it. So now when I add a new object, it's gonna appear right there. And it's gonna say shift A. And I just use a cylinder that I'm gonna modify a bit. So I scale this one down and of course make sure proportional editing is turned off. Don't want to adjust this handle, no this metal pin that I just did, only the handle. And I just move it out a bit to make the shape. Seven to go into top view slash isolation mode, one vertex mode, alt Z and I have this x-ray mode. And yeah, I just move things around a bit. And I decided to also add a mirror modifier. And here's another really useful add-on called Auto Mirror. Also preferences add-on, just enable it. And it's really nice. Also has a nice option to cut the object in half for you. So then basically one click, you have this mirror. Orientation is the side that you want to keep. So right now I want to keep working on the negative side of the x-axis. So orientation, I choose negative, then I click auto mirror and now I have this mirror. And I only have to worry about one side. And here I just continue to shaping this thing and also scaling it, zooming out a bit, see if it looks okay. Since this is a stylized toaster, I'm pushing the, the size of these, especially the iconic things 
of the toes up, make them a bit bigger. I think that's a you know, very common thing for stylized art. Of course, everyone notices, everyone knows what like the toaster handle is, so it's kind of important. Yeah, the auto smooth, and then I wanted to add a subdivision surface modifier. That's where I realized that's not gonna go well with my blocky handle. It's just basically gonna turn this into like a cylinder if I add the subdivision. So what I can do is go into face mode and hit L to select link, um, loose parts, and then P separate by selection. So now I have two separate objects and I can just work on the handle on its own. And of course here I scale in the metal pen, move it down a bit, now for the subdivision, what I really want is, I want like the outer edge loop. I want this to be more smooth. And to be honest, I could have just uh, selected all of those, beveled those, but I chose the slightly more complicated way. I select the faces here and then I to insert them. And of course you have to be careful because it can easily break your geometry. Uh, it's a lot safer. You just insert a little bit and then you scale them and maybe don't scale them on the Z axis. So choose individual origins here. So they're not scaling towards the middle and just scale it in. And now the subdivision surface is just gonna have more geometry here. So control one to edit. And this time I just chose to make a few loop cuts here to even out these edges. Of course, could have creased it, could have beveled it. There are always many solutions to the same problem. Blender. And then I go ahead and apply this with the level 1 subdivision and I just bevel the edges here a bit just to make them a little less sharp and you know more realistic. Now one of the most important things for a toaster is somewhere to put the toast inside. So I chose the toaster shift s cursor to select it so it's wide in middle and then shift a and add a cube and we're just going to do the same thing right uh, scale it in here and uh, remove it as a boolean from the toaster and we can actually do that right away i think it's easier to just apply the boolean and then just keep editing the shape so you kind of see what it's going to look like so shift select the toaster and control minus we have the boolean and this time it's working quite nicely and i decided that i want to have like a little bit of a bigger inset on the top and then the toast slots that is going to be a little bit smaller and i do that by moving the cube up this is the big inset and then here in the edit mode i can just choose the toast slots i can extrude them out of this cube. So for that I make a loop cut and increase it to two with the mouse wheel. Those are going to be my toe slots so I'm gonna bevel these one more time, these two new loop cuts. And yeah to make them a little bit bigger um, I think the easiest way is if you choose the pivot uh, median point And then you can scale on the x-axis, so S, X, now they're getting bigger. And of course you can scale the, the one in the middle if you want it uh, to have them closer together. Now I want to select the bottom faces, easy way to do that, Alt, Z, X-ray mode. And then I can select those ones. And here I extrude them, but then I figured, you know what, I want to have a little bit more of an inset here. So turn off auto merge, so because turning off auto merge, so I can hit I to inset and just click OK. So now there are two overlapping faces. And now when I scale on the Y axis, I'm scaling in the new faces and I can extrude those inwards. And here I'm just trying to wing it. Obviously, no one's going to look inside there because I'm not going to place the camera uh, right above the toaster. 
And I leave it at that and I'm not going to apply the boolean because, you know, I might want to adjust things. The next thing I want to do is make this kind of like wire, not a wire, but this uh, steel thing. So I tap into edit mode of the toaster and just go ahead and select a few faces here. I'm gonna select one wing and the same what we've already done a few times here. Shift D to duplicate, P to separate by selection. And then we select the new object, three face mode A, select all faces, Alt E for the extrude menu and extrude along normals. And just extrude it a little bit. I'm just trying to make it less than the bottom wing here. So I think this is okay. Here I want to bevel the outer edges. There's a cool method here, select, select loops and choose select boundary loops and now you only have these outer loops selected Control b to bevel and to make sure that i don't accidentally uh, bevel too much and the geometry gets completely broken there's a cool way you just hit c that's going to add this constraint and now the maximum you can do is just right up until the point where the geometry breaks and you know if i drag here i can't go further than that so i know that is safe uh, very useful sometimes you bevel and you break the geometry right there like behind the toaster some part you're not even seeing and then you realize that later on and you have this uh, geometry and it takes you ages to fix it manually so definitely good way always use c when beveling and now this looks a bit too blocky so i just add another subdivision surface control one nothing that's uh, smooth enough now now the next thing we need is a toast. So with the cursor back in the middle, I'm going to add a cube and just start editing it, scanning it in a bit. And now I just bring in this toast image. I'm gonna provide the link in the description. It's free for commercial use. It's from the great site Pixabay. And here I just clear the rotation then I rotate it on the Y axis. Once again, the screencast keys seem to have stopped working. Uh, it seems a bit buggy at the moment with Blender 3.1. Now I'm not going to model it exactly, but I think, you know, just this is nice to have a reference. And we're going to use this image later on for the texture because I'm just gonna map the texture of the toast right onto the toast mesh and then it looks kind of realistic. And then actually we're going to use a few tricks to make it look less realistic, more stylized, you know, push the saturation blow it out a bit anyhow i'm just trying to scale the image so i have more or less a guide and if you're following this tutorial because you want to go all the way and do the toaster robot it's quite important that the that the distance from the center to like these outer edges in the middle is the same the reason is I have this toaster robot hand that's going to grab it with the hooks and it's just so much easier if the hooks can just move the same way and they're just going to grab where these uh, edge loops that I'm doing here where they end. So I'm just doing these to have them as a reference. So I'm just loop cutting here and then I select these faces, shift D to duplicate, P separate by selection. And I just keep it open. So now when I edit the original cube, which I do here with a few more loop cuts, I make sure that, you know, where the, where these planes that are just duplicated, where they touch, that that's just gonna be the same. So this is exactly where the robot uh, fingers, so to speak, are gonna grab the toast. Then I want to make it more round and I just go into edge mode. Since I'm still in x-ray mode, I can just drag like this and I'm selecting the edges, even though you can't see them because they are pointing perfectly away from the camera, but they are selected. So I can go control B, bevel those, increase it with the mouse wheel, make it nice and round, go back into vertex mode. And of course with proportional editing turned on, I'm just gonna start dragging around the corners, just try to find a shape 
since this is all stylized, I think, yeah, just making these curvatures a bit bigger, pushing this out a bit, um, makes it look more stylized and cartoony. And of course, I always keep the reference here in mind, the, so not the reference, but the plane that I extruded, make sure that one stays the same. So basically what I have is the corners. That's what I can move. So the middle stays at the same spot. Now with the shape done, I can delete these markers and I tap into the toast one more time and I don't need any of these vertices here in the middle. I can just select them, select them on the other side and control X to dissolve those. And then I select those two faces and I'm going to bevel it. So control B, just a tiny bit, make it more round. Toast obviously doesn't have any sharp edges here. And to make it more smooth, I add a subdivision surface. And then I right click and select shade smooth. And I notice that, you know what? One is enough as long as it's shaded smooth. And I don't need the toast reference anymore, so I can just delete that image. Now, one more thing that's missing from a toaster is this wheel that you can use to determine how much time you want it. And I think for the robot, I want the wheel kind of connected. So it's like the toast robot arm is going to come out right where this wheel is. So it seems like it's ticking down and somehow that triggers the entire robot arm. But yeah, obviously we're just going to make it a separate object, so we can move that freely around. And I'm also going to have to rotate it a bit because the surface of my toaster is um, rounded in pretty much all directions here. And this one's pretty straightforward, just I to insert the face, E to extrude it inward. So I want this to be like the outer loop. And I ended up modifying this a little bit later on when I did the texturing and I realized, yeah, it should, should look a bit different. But anyhow, here I extrude this thing. This is going to be the wheel that you can turn. And I thought since this is kind of a, like retro 50s look, it would be cool to have this like little metal thing like pointing towards the, the time. Uh, you're going to see what I mean in a moment. But first I bevel this one, make it nice and smooth. And now I just select a few faces that I want to duplicate for this metal thing. So once again, select those, Shift D to duplicate, P, separate by selection, tab, object mode, tab, the new one, and we are in edit mode. And then I just move it up, G, Z, Then I hit slash to go into isolation mode and I want to make the uh, top a bit more pointy. So I select those two vertices, choose median point as pivot. Now I can go S, X and just scale them inward a bit. Uh, S, Y might work better. And with all faces selected, I'm going to extrude the long normals. Here I'm using the custom shortcut. Otherwise, you can hit Alt E, select it there. Just move it out a little bit by holding down Shift. And now we have this kind of thing that's going to be metal and pointing at you know the remaining time of the toast. So I shaded it smooth and here I select a few faces that I can extrude. So it's kind of connected to the wing and not just you know, floating in the air. The next thing the toaster needs is some heating, heating pipes. No, they're not really pipes. Heating wires, maybe? Wire might be the wrong word. So, uh, but here I have this reference. Uh, it turns out they look pretty much the same on every toaster. Seems like the perfect technology has been found. 
So I just shift right click, place the cursor there and time to add a cylinder by going shift A. And I think 32 because we left like a holy count a long time ago. Nothing's gonna save that anymore. So I just wrote it on the X and then scale it down. And of course, scale it on the Y axis. Uh, it's a little bit thick. And later on, I made it a bit smaller. When I realized uh, the toast doesn't have a lot of space left because I made these too thick. <laughs> so maybe you might want to make them a bit smaller right away. I kind of justified it by saying I'm doing it stylized and you know, those those pipes are something everyone notices at. Pretty iconic for a toaster. So I think it doesn't hurt to push the push the size a bit. For the vertical ones, I select this one, shift D, duplicate, and then RX90. So now we have this vertical pipe. And just bring it into position. To get this nice, like nice 90 degree curve, this spin tool is super useful. Just one annoying thing with the spin tool, you have to choose the axis. It doesn't really do it based on where you're looking at. But here we can go into tool and then choose the Y axis. And now it's going to spin with the cursor as the origin. So you place the cursor here, which means you get a bit of a sharp angle. And when you're holding down control, you get these nice perfect increments. You can just go E and then extrude the top. And so we have this nice curvature here. And yeah, there's our toaster pipe. And to get a lot more of those, we can easily use an array. So I bring it into position, then add the modify array. We don't want the X axis, we want the Y axis. And this is relative. Probably should have used constant. So relative means, you know, the size of the object. So 10 times the size of the object on the Y. That's how it's going to place the part. And I took a quick look and noticed that five seems to be the standard number for toaster heating pipes. So I go with five. And I just go into top view, seven on the numpad. And for the spacing, I'm just gonna wing it, make it look more or less correctly and also notice the other pipe isn't really long enough so sy to scale it on the y-axis and then i just use a bunch of mirror modifiers actually for this one i don't know why i just decided to duplicate it have it in one shape so i went into edit mode selected all of this uh, shift d to duplicate RZ180 to rotate 180 degrees and then just move it on the X axis. And this one I chose the other way once again, no reason here. So this one I just went like Alt D, make a link duplicate and just move it by hand. And yeah, I'm, I'm changing the size of this and I'm moving things around later on anyway. And to duplicate it, I just add a mirror modifier. And of course I choose the toaster as the mirror object. So I select this one, add a mirror and mirror object is the toaster. So now it's on the other side. Then I can just duplicate the modifier for the second pipe thing. Unfortunately I can't do it for the the vertical ones because they have the ray modifier and you can't copy selected modifiers. So you can see it doesn't work. Uh, I think there's a nice add-on on GitHub that can do that. But yeah in vanilla blender unfortunately this very very useful function is missing. I can do it with this one and here I just add the mirror manually and of course the same here mirror object the toaster and here I decided you know what uh, the toaster just seems to be a bit too long 
doesn't really have to be so I just went ahead and scaled it a bit on the y-axis just choose these like I just se selected the three main shapes the toaster body the ring on the top and this metal ring that's going uh, across the y-axis and just scale it on the y a bit and of course for the other stuff I just have to move it around then but yeah I figured it looks a bit better if the toaster isn't too too long and now that I knew okay this is going to be my toaster shape I applied this boolean here that cuts into the slider holder and of course I need to extrude it so there isn't this uh, wicked hole so I just select those edges and then E to extrude and of course with F we can just make a face here and when I do those things uh, it's useful to check the face orientation in the preferences I made it that normal oriented faces are invisible and I only see the wrong ones in red you can turn it on here I have a shortcut assigned um, I mean a quick favorite so with Q I can always access that just good to check this um, early and often and so this is what I do with the entire toast so once again I go face orientation um, the big one doesn't matter because that's from the boolean so if I hide this it looks good and then I noticed for some reason this handler actually um, got flipped but of course that's super easy to fix uh, I apply the mirror don't really need that anymore and just select all faces in edit mode and then shift n to recalculate faces like 95% of the cases that's going to solve the problem